time. Okay, good afternoon. Um, I want to start by turning it over right away to our Dean, Joanna Massangila. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. My name is Joanna Massangila. I'm the Dean of the School of Education at Syracuse University. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge with respect the Onondaga Nation, Fire Keepers of the Haudenosaunee, the Id indigenous peoples on whose ancestral land Syracuse University now stands. We are here today for our annual Homecoming and Reunion, Orange Central, and most importantly, to celebrate the launch of the School of Education's new collaborative Center on Disability and Inclusion, which builds on the School of Education and Syracuse University's longstanding commitments to inclusive education and disability rights. The CDI will advance this work and promote the inclusion of people with disabilities in all aspects of school and society. This is a vital representation of the School of Education's mission to lead through inquiry, inclusion, and action. And we are grateful to have outstanding partners, including the Syracuse City School District. I hope you will continue to follow the center's work and join us for future public programs. It's now my pleasure to turn our program over to Christine Ashby, Associate Professor of Inclusive Education and Disability Studies and the Director of the CDI. Christy, what a great day this is. Congratulations again to you and everyone who's made this center possible. Thank you, Joanna. We are so excited. And I just wanna say we appreciate all of your support and leadership throughout this process of launching this new center. We also wish to acknowledge the efforts of Associate Dean Melissa Luke, Interim Vice President for Research Ramesh Reyna, and Interim Provost John Liu, who were all instrumental in helping get this new center off the ground. I also am deeply grateful for the work and camaraderie of CDI Assistant Director Beth Myers. Beth has been my partner at every stage in this process. Her passion and commitment to inclusive education and disability rights are evident in everything she does, most particularly in the work of Tayshoff Center and Inclusive View. So on behalf of all of us connected to the CDI, and you'll meet a few of us today, I want to welcome all of you to this official kickoff event. We are thrilled to be part of Orange Central and hope that this is the start of many more conversations. This new collaborative center has been a long time coming. As we will share this afternoon, the CDI builds on a long and storied legacy of scholarship and activism in the School of Education in the areas of disability rights, deinstitutionalization, community integration, communication access, and school inclusion at every level. And while we wanna celebrate all that is new and exciting, None of this would have been possible without the historical leadership of so many. Uh, far too many people for us to name here, but I do want to acknowledge with deep respect and gratitude, the work of Doug Bicklin, former Dean and director of what was then called the Facilitated Communication Institute and Steve Taylor, beloved colleague and mentor who directed the Center on Human Policy for so many years and who was taken from us far too soon. As an alumna of Syracuse University, I had the distinct pleasure of studying with both Doug and Steve, and I will be forever grateful for their mentorship and vision. So we clearly, this work didn't just come out of nowhere. This grew up out of a foundation that was long and rich and so important, both locally and nationally in terms of disability rights. And as we launch into what we're gonna, our sort of historical traditions, but also our new directions we're going, I wanna draw your attention to a resource that's available on our new website. And that resource is a historical timeline of disability rights. And we, it was actually really fun to go back and put this together and look at all of the work that has been done. So if you go to our website and you click on the timeline of milestones, you will have an opportunity to share in what has been a really long and amazing journey, starting from 1946 with the Department of Education for Exceptional Children, pretty outdated language, but really, really important roots, to the opening of Hoople, to the founding of the Center on Human Policy in 1971. This timeline is interactive. And if you want to learn more about anything on the timeline, you simply click on the I, a text box will pop up, which will tell you more about that time period. And then you click it again to head back out. So from 1971 
through the founding of the Facilitated Communication Institute in 1992 to the establishment of the Disability Studies Program, which was the first in the nation, to our historic collaborations with the College of Law, all the way to the current, more recent um, efforts around Inclusive U, which you'll hear about. The School of Education has been doing this work for a really long time, and we are so proud to be part of that legacy. So today, when we get to officially launch the start of the Center on Disability and Inclusion. So I encourage you to take some time to peruse this timeline, see some old images and familiar faces, um, and, and join with us in this journey. So I now wanna turn it over to um, Associate Professor Alan Foley, who's Chair of the Cultural Foundations of Education Department and Director of the Center on Human Policy to sort of kick us off on our historical journey. Take it away, Alan. Thanks, Christy. Um, yeah, and congratulations. This is really exciting and it's great to see um, all these uh, folks here. Um, it's nice to see a, a new and different group of people than I seem to see in my uh, kind of regular day to day. Um, so this is a really exciting time. And um, as Christy mentioned, the Center on Human Policy was founded in 1971 um, by the then Dean of the School of Education, Bert Blatt. And the Center on Human Policy has a kind of a long and uh, storied the tradition and history in uh, first in kind of really kind of being at the vanguard and the deinstitutionalization movement in the, the 1970s and 80s, um, closing the large congregate um, uh, institutions where people with disabilities, uh, particularly intellectual disability, um, were really just locked away um, in really horrific conditions. Um, and and it's through um, uh, the, I guess, in the 70s and 80s and 90s in um, building a movement around um, community living and um, community participation. And um, I think I love that there uh, on the slide here is one of the um, center's, um, I think, most famous posters, the label jars, uh, not people poster. So uh, the center has had a long history in the, the research and teaching, but also um, in advocacy and, and political work um, in um, uh, support of the disability rights movement. Um, and um, the, the CHP has located or has occupied a number of physical spaces on campus uh, in its first you know, 50 years. Um, some of the buildings don't even exist anymore. Um, Hoople, some of you might um, remember, um, which is now the, the um, site of the new Veterans Center next to Huntington Hall. Um, the CHP had houses on Ostrom. It's been in various places on campus and Huntington Hall. And I'm just thrilled that the center has uh, a new home um, and will be a part of the CDI as it uh, goes into its next, next 50 years. So thanks, Christy. And I believe, Robert, you have, we're gonna share some of your perspectives on your experience with Center on Human Policy. Yes, my name is Robert Belden. Um, I work with the Center of Human Policy on the Community for All project, which we help design six online toolkits for people with intellectual disabilities for their everyday life and services um, better. Um, I went on um, about five or six trips with the Center of Human Policy which we, we visited numerous different places to see what kind of tools that they wanted or needed to be built. Um, um, two, year, two years into it, um, uh, a part participant in agency um, called Sani's um, actually ended up hiring me on it. To, Field assistant, which I help people um, stand up for the rights and advocate for themselves. And I would have never been able to get that opportunity if the Center of Human Policy didn't help me and make me stronger as a self advocate. 
Thank you, Robert. That's, I think your story is, there's so many stories like that of folks that, who got their start in working in, um, as part of the Center on Human Policy. And so we really thank you for being part of this exciting new step in our journey. Thank you for the opportunity. Great. So if we think chronologically from the Center on Human Policy, the next of these historic centers that came into being was the ICI, or originally um, the Facilitated Communication Institute. I've been part of this work with the ICI since I was a doctoral student here in 2002. And I am thrilled to bring the work on communication and inclusion into this larger structure and this collaborative endeavor. Founded in 1991 as the Facilitated Communication Institute, the ICI is an active research, training, and support center, and the nation's leading resource on communication and inclusion for individuals that type to communicate, individuals that might not have reliable verbal speech and communicate through typed um, communication instead. Grounded in an unyielding belief in the importance of communication as a human right, and in the foundational principle of a presuming competence. The ICI has been providing trainings, hosting national conferences, conducting research, working in local school districts, and disseminating information through a whole variety of mediums for over 30 years. To reflect a greater focus on the connection between communication and inclusion, we changed our name to the Institute on Communication and Inclusion in 2010. But with the creation of the CDI, we are now the Inclusion and Communication Initiatives. Recognizing the powerful role of narrative and media, we've also produced several Academy Award-winning documentaries, including um, the Academy Award-nominated Autism is a World and the 2010 film um, that was a road trip film, Wretches and Jabberers. And I want to acknowledge we have a couple of our staff members here with us um, participating in the meeting. We have uh, Sujit Karup and Sralata Karup. And joining here us here on the panel today is my dear friend and colleague, Jamie Burke, who's going to share a few thoughts on his connection to this work. And he's joined today by his mother and ICI trainer, Sherry Burke. Take it away, Jamie. Oh, you are muted. The, the most important words of 2020. You are muted. Thank you, Christy and everyone. My congratulations to the new Center on Disability Inclusion and especially from my heart to the Initiatives for Communication and Inclusion, ICI. When I was a tender five years old, I had very little speech and no way to really function in the world of speaking people. I was given the opportunity to learn how to communicate my thoughts and my thoughts intelligence and emotions when I was in those tender years. To liberate thoughts and gave choices to me in that world, and I was able to go on to public school and be included in regular classrooms. Type communication opened so many doors for me. It is paramount to know that, know that the doors to the initiatives for communication and inclusion will continue to invite others for excellent opportunities for communication, for friends, social groups, and for research and continued solving of the questions we ask. It is of enormous importance, this work of support in the building of that foundation and the wings to carry it forward are in place for, for continued growth. As a young man who received those benefits and supports, I was able to graduate in May of 2013 from the College of Arts and Science with my Bachelor of Arts degree. I am pleased and honored to offer congratulations to the new venture of the Center on Disability Inclusion. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you. Um, we are so honored that you are with us today. I feel like you have been part of this journey for a really long time and it's exciting to see, to see this happening and to have you here as an alum since this is a homecoming weekend. Um, and now I'm gonna turn it over to Beth Myers, Assistant Professor of Inclusive Education, Assistant Director of the CDI and Director of the Tayshoff Institute, excuse me, Tayshoff Center for Inclusive Higher Education. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I'm so honored to be part of this project. Um, we always talk about how we're standing on the shoulders of giants here at Syracuse. And it's one of the things that we really try to teach our students um, is to understand the legacy of the work here that Syracuse University has played in the disability rights and inclusion movement. And I'm so proud to get to carry on that work with the Tayshoff Center and the Center on Disability and Inclusion. And I'm so glad to get to do it alongside 
uh, Dr. Christy Ashby. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the work that we're doing here at the Tayshoff Center for Inclusive Higher Education, which is really committed to the full inclusion of students with intellectual disability and college opportunities. And we do that really through um, several aspects, and that is uh, our, our biggest piece, which is the model programming through our Inclusive U program. Inclusive U is this fabulous initiative at Syracuse that really um, embodies our commitment to full inclusion at Syracuse University. And, and Inclusive U is a program um, for students with intellectual and developmental disabilities to attend college at Syracuse University. It's grown over the last several years um, from 14 students to now near 90 students um, with intellectual and developmental disabilities here at SU who are thriving in classes, fully included in the residence halls, um, participating in clubs and organizations. Uh, but it's not only that, we also are leading research um, in the field of inclusive higher education. We run uh, the National Journal of Inclusive Post-Secondary Education. We are leaders in national and international presentations and leadership across the field. And uh, in addition to that national and international collaboration, we run this state-of-the-art uh, conference, which is uh, the largest conference in post-secondary education uh, around intellectual disability and also um, the only student leadership conference in intellectual disability, which I'll actually uh, talk about a little bit later. And then um, we also have collaborations across our campus, uh, including our, our newest collaboration, which is with our Intelligence Plus Plus project uh, with VPA and the Launchpad around inclusive design, which is a really exciting project that's going on right now. And uh, many other collaborations with other colleges and universities across the country and across the world. So uh, we're really excited to be uh, leading the field. We are the largest and most inclusive college program for students with intellectual disability. And I would like to introduce one of our students, uh, Cleo Hamilton, who is just going to tell you a little bit about himself. Um, thank you so much, Beth Myers, for um, having me here. Um, I'm here to get this started right now. Um, hi, my, I'm Cleo Hamilton. I'm from Syracuse, New York. I am a student at Syracuse University in the Inclusive View program. I was a sport management major, finished my classes last year, and this year I am doing the Inclusive View internship program. Right now, my internship is at the Office of Alumni Engagement. My favorite things about Syracuse is the Orange community. And I was also a Remembrance Scholar, which was last year for end of this year of last semester. Um, I am involved in st Student Association, Alathon, Relay for Life, and also Camp Keswick. And um, I'm glad I got to be in Inclusive View because I got to meet new people have new opportunities to have fun. And I have a special affinity because he's also a Nottingham Bulldog grad. So, you know, oh, go, gotcha. yeah. go Syracuse, right? Syracuse all the um, way. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks so much, Cleo. Cleo is a great representation of uh, not just Inclusive View, but Syracuse University. We are so proud of him. Thanks, Cleo. So, so we had these three centers, right? We had Center on Human Policy, we had the ICI, we had Tayshop, and you might wonder, well, why, why bring them together? They've been functioning collaboratively and all on the same floor of Huntington Hall for a while now. Why would we have, why would we try to create something new? And so first of all, we recognize that what we have done historically is really focus on inclusion across the lifespan in schools, in communities, in neighborhoods, in higher education, that we have this really rich and diverse history and that that was something exciting to build on. All of our work across all three of these centers has always been guided by both the belief in the presumption of competence and the role of construction of competence, that we have to do something that is that it requires action. 
And that that was a philosophy and an ideology shared across all three of these historic centers. We've always operated from the, just like this panel today, that nothing about us without us, which is the rallying cry of the disability rights movement, which is that no decision should be made about the lives of people with disabilities that aren't made with people with disabilities and guided by people with disabilities. That it's our roles to be allies, accomplices in that work, but that this work needs to be driven by the voices of the people we aim to work with and support. And that is so central to who we are as three individual organizations, but also the School of Education, that we just wanted to find a way to bring this work together. We love the fact that these three centers sit in the School of Ed. When we were making a decision about putting forward this proposal, we could decide to go as an institute, which would be across the whole university, or a center. We really liked the idea of this living and breathing in the School of Education. We will collaborate and already are collaborating across campus, as you heard from Beth's example, collaborating with Newhouse. We're collaborating with the law school. We collaborate with Burton Blatt Institute, but we really wanted this to live and breathe inside the School of Education and have been deeply and intimately connected to the work of teacher development and leader development. And we wanted to learn from each other. We've been doing that for years and why can't, we wanted to build on that and take it even further. And honestly, we wanna be able to go for larger federal grants and having this larger center with all of our resources and expertise makes us even more competitive to go after the kinds of grant funding that will allow us to do even bigger things that have a more national and international outreach. And this is actually something that I think all three of the folks that you've heard, you know, Beth and Alan and I um, really feel strongly about. This work needs to be deeply connected to school districts. We have to work both outside and inside of systems. And so we really have loved that the new grants that we're gonna talk about briefly, bring us into even closer collaboration and partnership with our local school districts. And finally, all of this work is guided by a shared commitment to equity and intersectionality, that none of us leave, lead single issue lives. And as we talk about disability, we need to think about how disability intersects with race and class and really trying to look at those rich interdisciplinary and intersectional approaches. So that was our motivation. And out of that motivation and a lot of planning grew the Center on Disability and Inclusion. And so we describe ourselves as a disability related research center that works to develop and implement initiatives promoting inclusion of people with disabilities in all aspects of school and society locally and globally. That's our tagline, that's what we aim to do. And we're doing it through a variety of, of strands. You've already heard about three of them, Tayshoff, ICI, and the Center on Human Policy. But we're bringing into that as well, um, the Mid-State Partnership, which I'll talk about in a second, the Pre-Employment Transition Services Grant. These are both large state grants that we got to support work with the local community. And then the other two sections of, of the CDI are our teacher and leader development initiatives, which connect to work we're doing with the state ed department, with the Excelsior Journal for teacher education that I co-edit along with my colleague, Julia White, who I see here. Hello, Julia. Um, and our work with the Cedar Center, which is, an which is a national technical assistance center. And then finally, and, and, and important to everything we do are our academic unit collaborative partners, including the inclusive education programs in the School of Ed, the disability studies program, and of course, the College of Law. So we're gonna highlight the, the grants that came in over the last couple of years that have really jump-started our work with local school districts. So excited to announce the work of the Mid-State Partnership, and in particular, the three directors of the pieces of the Mid-State Partnership, Shana Lewis, who directs the Regional Partnership Center, Maria Gill, who supports and directs the Early Childhood Family and Community Engagement Center, similar to what we used to talk about. These were um, as the old ECDC, right? She's been here. This is a, these aren't new faces, but they're in new and exciting roles. And then Amy Zogby, who is the director of the School Age Family and Community Engagement Center, which has its roots also in SUPAC. Um, so we have all of these, this history that we're drawing on. These three grants all came in at the same time to support a large state level partnership effort. 
that is both working directly with school systems through targeted learning opportunities, systems change efforts, regional training, on-site support in multiple areas, literacy, behavior, transition, family engagement, specially designed instruction, we could go on and on. They are actively doing trainings with school districts personnel right now. And then we have our face centers, which are really focused on strengthening interagency connections with families, school systems, and regional resources. We serve 51 school districts across multiple um, uh, region. Uh, we're a part of the mid-state region, but we work with 51 school districts and over 30 early childhood programs. But we're so excited that it's part of a cohesive partnership that links family engagement with school district systems change work, and we all are working on these efforts together. We have a large, robust staff, many of whom are on this call. I wish I could shout all of you out, but it would take too long. So please, you know, either put a little thumbs up next to your name if you're part of the partnership or raise your hand on the screen so we can see who you are. We are so grateful you are here and we feel honored to get to work with you in this. And then I get to talk a little bit about our pre-employment transition services. That are being um, that are being head up by Jason McDowell. Uh, this is another grant that came in at the same time. So um, we have been working really hard on putting all of these pieces together. The pre-employment transition services, which we're calling pre-ETS, um, is a really exciting initiative. Also through um, New York State. Christy, can you go to the next slide? Yes, I can. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> and our pre-employment transition services are a really exciting service that we're able to provide for students with disabilities um, who are starting to transition uh, or preparing to transition out of high school. So ages 14 to 21, um, who are really looking at uh, what's next after high school. So this is really career planning, thinking about career exploration, workplace readiness skills, post-secondary options, so things like college and, and um, post-second, everything's for post-secondary inclusion, self-advocacy skills and work-based learning. So we're really looking at both embedding in high schools and embedding in workplaces and thinking about the ways that we can help transition kids to really um, significant career opportunities post-secondary. So what's gonna happen after high school and getting kids better outcomes. We're so excited because this, we actually have our hands getting a little dirtier than perhaps we have in the past in the sense of we're obviously looking at policy work and research work, but we're getting a lot more direct connection through these grant projects with local teachers and local youth with disabilities. And there's so many great connections between the work of Tayshoff, obviously, and the pre-employment transition um, project. And so we're seeing all these fabulous connections happening and taking place. So Beth, you wanna share a couple of these first highlights that are connected to the Tayshoff work? Absolutely, so this is the first one is the one that I would, uh, said that I would talk about earlier and that is our state of the art student leadership conference. Um, this is something that we have been doing uh, for a few years now. We have uh, been leading, actually for 10 years, we've been having a state of the art conference in post-secondary education. And that is our professional conference that the Tayshoff Center leads in post-secondary education. And we've been doing that for quite a few years and we're uh, leading that in the field where we bring together professionals from universities across the United States and globally to talk about increasing initiatives at universities to increase opportunities for students at colleges and universities in higher ed. Um, but three years ago, we said, what we really need to do is also bring together students to think about how they can increase their leadership opportunities. And this is for students with intellectual and developmental disabilities who are in college or have recently graduated from college or who are thinking about college opportunities. And so we started the Student Leadership Conference uh, that runs sort of in tandem to our professional conference. And three years ago, we had 50 students who came to Syracuse University from all over the country. And 
Um, and then that has slowly grown. Last year, we took, uh, we had a, a, around 100 students who went to Reno, Nevada for uh, our student leadership conference. And then this year, we had a virtual student leadership conference. And uh, at, for our, our largest ever, we ended up with over 400 people at one point as part of our virtual student leadership conference. It was a fantastic two-day virtual conference. The students um, put on a fan, a unbelievable amount of sessions. Uh, there's also a karaoke night, um, dance parties, but also really significant leadership sessions that are all student run. And um, it is just a, the outgrowth of this, to be able to see this is, is really remarkable, especially considering it's the only student run conference for students with intellectual disability in the world. So we're really proud of this. The next thing um, is something that's coming up at part of our Syracuse International Film Festival. Um, one of the films that has been selected this year is a film that was made by uh, two Syracuse University students. One is a recent graduate, Kylie Walters, and her roommate, um, Olivia Based. Kylie um, was an honors student here and uh, was a residential mentor in our Inclusive U program. And Olivia Bass was an, is a current Inclusive U student. And they created a film about their experience being roommates together called And They Were Roommates. And it's a really remarkable film about their experience together, their uh, tribulations and triumphs and it's a really honest look at uh, the experience that they had. And they also interview other uh, inclusive youth students, other mentors and talk about what that experience is like. And it's a really raw and honest look at uh, the experience of being uh, a mentor, a mentee and, and what that experience is like. So it's, uh, I, I really encourage everyone to, to try to attend. We don't have the exact date for that yet. So that's why that's the, the range. We will get that exact date, make sure it's on the website um, and make sure people know about this. It's a fabulous film. And for once the Syracuse International Film Festival will be virtual. So you can hop in and out of lots of films during that time. I wanna highlight just a couple of other upcoming events that we're really excited about. Um, one is for the first time ever, we are going to hold a virtual training, introductory training in learning to be a facilitator. We have been having these intro workshops at least twice a year for decades. It's always been in person. It's always been two days on campus. And, and we, while we are sad that we can't do that and we can't be together, we have shifted to a, in this new virtual world to a virtual introductory training workshop, November 9th and 10th. And because of the move to virtual, we have folks in attendance from Arkansas, England, California, all coming together to learn how to support communication for folks. So we're really excited. There's more information on the website. And then two final things we wanna highlight. One is we're excited to be partnering with the Lender Center for Social Justice and the Douglas Bicklin Landscape of Urban Ed Lecture Series for a symposium that's focused on the policing of black, brown and disabled bodies in and outside of school. So it's gonna be an intersectional look at disability and race and class that we will be part of, um, and part of that event and be having uh, speakers related to both, to all of those various topics coming together. That will be in mid-February. And finally, just be paying attention. This is the 30th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act. And so there'll be events happening throughout campus, throughout the year that we will be part of and that other units on campus will be sponsoring. So we'll make sure that information gets out to you. And now, before we have, a short video we're going to share with you that um, was put together with folks that you'll recognize, hopefully lots of familiar faces, maybe some people that are new to you. After the short video, we'll have a couple of minutes for questions and answers.
congratulations to the Center on Disability and Inclusion. This is yet another example of a school of education leading the way in disability rights. I couldn't be more proud of Dr. Beth Myers and Dr. Christy Ashby. Well done. Congratulations to Syracuse for creating the Center on Disability and Inclusion and for carrying on a 50 year tradition in inclusion beginning in early childhood right up through higher education and in communication rights and in community living. Congratulations, Syracuse. I'd like to thank the School of Education at Syracuse University for the establishment of the Center on Disability and Inclusion. I believe the work that you're doing continues to advance the field where you're collaborating across the university on great work that you're doing. Thank you very much. And I really look forward to learning more about the outcome of your work. I wish to congratulate the new Center on Disability and Inclusion. This important center will honor the memory of Professor Steve Taylor and follow in his tradition of excellence in disability studies. Mazel tov. I came to Syracuse more than 30 years ago, in large part because of the faculty and staff of what was then the Center on Human Policy. The Center on Disability Inclusion is a natural outgrowth of the innovative and pioneering work at the School of Education on Disability Issues. I am proud to have been a part of the Center on Human Policy, the Center on Human Policy Law and Disability Studies, and now this new Center on Disability Inclusion. I wish my very best to my wonderful colleagues, Professors Beth Myers and Christy Ashby in this new Center on Disability and Inclusion at the School of Ed. Congratulations, I look forward to working with you all. Syracuse University has a long history of being a leading edge in the disability studies. We inspire to be the national leaders in disability culture, policy, education, and advocacy. This new research center is an important building block in the strategy. I thank all faculty, staff, students who work tirelessly to make the center a reality. I am honored to welcome the new Center on Disability and Inclusion. The work of this group is to show how important inclusive schools and communities are, and it is paramount to full inclusion for everyone. Congratulations to the Center for Disability and Inclusion. I'm excited to see the great new things coming for people with disabilities. Congratulations to Beth Myers, Christy Ashby, Alan Foley. It's so cool that we have a new inclusion center on the Syracuse, Syracuse campus. Congrats to Beth and Christy on the new Center of Disability and Inclusion. We are so proud of you. Congratulations to Beth and Christine on a new center. Congrats on new center of disability and inclusion. Congratulations to Beth and Christine on the new center of disability and inclusion. Address Beth and Christy. Congratulations. I'm so happy. Let's go cute. We talk about social capital um, and especially circling back to a topic that Maria raised for us at the very beginning of the call, which is the way that we can design career navigation services uh, and systems equitably. So I am so excited. We, only, we have a few minutes left. I want to thank everyone who contributed to that video. It was um, actually, a, I got a little choked up watching it, um, seeing some so many of those uh, friends of ours from from all through the years and all the, and especially seeing all the students that are part of this because that's really the heart of where, part of why we're so excited to be part of a school of that is to be so close to all of the students that we work with. So we have a few minutes that we can open up to questions, comments, feedback from anybody. Um, we're just really excited to have you join us. So if you feel free, you can unmute yourself or you can put a comment or a question in chat.
well, if I could say something, uh, first of all, congratulations. I think it's a really a big step forward for Syracuse University, uh, uh, you know, providing national and international prominence in this area. So it's really, really important. Uh, so in my sponsorship of the Intelligence Plus Plus uh, project, <clears throat> uh, it seems to me that it would be wonderful to uh, connect uh, your, your program more deeply with the with the students uh, that are working on, on on this project, looking for opportunities for innovation in the area of intellectual disabilities. <clears throat> and <clears throat> you know, there are many areas that one can look at to create tools and mechanisms and um, intelligent systems that can help people to be uh, uh, more, more effective and happy in society and, and their families as well, right? So it's, 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 uh, it's really trying to look at the problem from the degree degrees. So I'm hoping that uh, that connection can be made and that uh, you can also enlighten the folks working on this project with some of the uh, social, legal, and um, emotional issues that, that uh, people deal with. Thank you. That's actually a great comment. And it really speaks to why we're excited about doing this is the opportunities for sort of interdisciplinary and cross-disciplinary connections and, and really fueling innovation, but innovation in, in, in service of justice as sort of how I think about it. Like how do we, how do we marshal the resources at our disposal to really work in, in the service of justice and inclusion? So thank you so much for your support of that work. That is, is hugely appreciated. It's nice to see all the comments coming in also from alums. Thank you for being here. This is your, <laughs> you know, we really feel like we, we get the joy of stepping into a legacy that we didn't, we didn't create, right? We just get to be part of. And so many of you are part of that. Any other questions or comments before we? Um, yeah, I would like to say something because um, I really want to congratulate um, the both of you, both Christine and Beth. Um, I'm very happy for the two of you to um, the next day, I like saw it on the Lord's, um, you know, social media, especially on the Daily Orange. Um, some friends of mine who I got connect with also alumni, um, did told me all about it. So I really want to say congrats. I um, feel very happy for you guys. So party out leadership. So keep up the good work. I appreciate that. Congrats. Thank you, Cleo. I, I, you bring such an energy everywhere you go. And we're so grateful that we get to work with you and that you're part of the SU family. So planet orange, as we like to say. We also know you're our social media king, Cleo. So <laughs> You know that you, you you can find it there and repost it. We appreciate you. Ah, oh, thank um thank thank you guys. Yeah, Beth and I are working on getting up to speed with sort of the. I, I'm trying to figure out the whole Twitter thing now. That's the next next challenge. But um, I want to be mindful of everyone's time, and so I want to say we are here. We hope to hear from you. We will be reaching out a lot more in terms of future events, and we encourage you to check back into the website, which I see has been posted again in the chat so that you have, have it there. Copy it, put it in, um, tag it, because we will be trying to keep that alive with new events as they come up and really look forward to hearing your ideas and new directions we could take this work. We want to be responsive also to what other people um, are, are thinking about. So please reach out through the Facebook page, through website, through the School of Education. Um, and we really are excited to do this and thrilled you are here with us as we, as we launch. Okay. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thanks for all the support. Well, thank you. Bye. Congratulations. Bye. Enjoy the rest of Orange Central. Great work, y'all. Thank you. Thank you. I, I have a couple of private chats with people emailing me things, so I'll get those too. Oh, great. Okay, yeah, I saw some things flying by in the chat, but I didn't keep up with it all. Great, Oops. thank you. I'll have the chat. I'm also trying, let me just hit stop recording. I'm trying to... Um,